What do stalagmites and an IJN heavy cruiser have in common? Nothing, but together they look kind of cool. So I combined them and made this cool looking cave. I started off with two thick pieces of foam and used a hot wire knife to kind of just cut the rough shape of the cave. Not really trying to go too much for a rock looking texture. We'll be addressing that a little bit later, but again, just trying to open up that space a little bit. Happy with the rough shape of the opening, I really wanted to have the light being able to shine through the top to illuminate the ship, so I went about cutting a hole through the roof. I knew I was going to use some epoxy resin, so I wanted to protect some of the foam or give it a little extra la layer of protection, so I made a little concoction using some plaster of Paris, PVA glue, and some black paint. Not only will this help protect the foam, it'll also give it a good little base coat. So if we miss some paint in the future, it'll kind of hide it a little bit. Once it was dry, I moved on to applying some ground texture. Well, well technically rock texture for this. And I realized I've never really showed the whole process and I've had a couple of you ask. So here's the, how I make it. I just take some blown attic insulation. I bought this bag back in 2020 for like 12 bucks and it's lasted all until now. If you want it a little bit more coarse, you can also skip the blending method. But I really like the way it looks and the texture it provides, so I've been blending it ever since. And really, you just add as much water as possible to get it to blend. Once it starts churning like that, you can just let it go for as long as you want until you get that kind of texture you like. Once you're happy with the texture, I just add a bunch of plaster to it. And the ratio kind of changes depending on how quick or slow I want the mixture to set. And I just always eyeball it. And then once you've applied the plaster, depending on how much you've added, you have about a 15 to 30 minute working time. So I went about applying it to the walls and floor of the cave. Not really caring about for full coverage, but just kind of get it here and there. Mainly the prominent features, kind of just building up areas. Again, I'm going for like a stalagmite, stalagmite, stalactite kind of cave. And I just build, built up sediment here and there. Trying to make some weird geologic features just to add to the interest of the cave. With the cave now mostly built out, I wanted to add some stalagmites and stalactites, so I followed Luke Towns' method for when he made a cave like this, and used some air drying clay, and then just rolling them in between my fingers or against the desk, trying to get a little pointy end on a couple of them. And then after doing that a few dozen times, you're left with a bunch of stalactites. Once they were dry, I just glued them in place using some PVA glue. Then it was time to bust out the airbrush. When I was looking for references for these kind of caves, I found they mostly came in this lightish brown tan kind of color. And then hit the floor of the cave with just a little bit of a lighter beige color for the sand. To add a little bit of texture and some variation, I went over with a darker brown wash, really focusing on those cracks and recesses. Now with the scene set, we need the main figure, or in this case, a ship. Now, some of you historical buffs might go, hey, MT, you know that's not where it sank, right? And I respond, yes, I do know that Takao was sunk in the Strait of Malacca, but this is cooler. So I'm going to choose cooler. Moving on. For the color scheme, I just went with some whole red, added a little bit of red to it because Tamiya's whole red is just way too dark for my liking. Followed this up with some IJN gray, and much like the name implies, I used wooden deck tan for the wooden deck. 
I followed this up with a darker gray wash, and finally used some black Tamiya panel line accents for those deep recessed areas. I blended and softened up some of that black panel accent with some mineral spirits. After having darkened everything down, I wanted to lighten it up with a lighter gray dry brushing. Not too shabby for a 30 minute paint job. I then scuttled her to the seabed using some hot glue. Wanting to add a little bit of color, I wanted to add some seaweed or some kind of like underwater vegetation. For this, I used to use some moss. I get them in these dry flat sheets, which I just pick off pieces and glue them to the surface. It was then time to prepare for the resin. For this, I just hot glued on some acrylic sheets to use as the dam. And for extra security, I taped up all the seams. I mixed together a turquoise blue color for the water or to tint the epoxy, to which then I started mixing. This is the first time I'd used this type of resin before since I'd run out of my previous stuff, which will then come back to bite me later on. But hey, if you're left with any kind of resin on the project after you finish, that's a success in my book. So I mixed both parts together, added some of that turquoisey blue, and I began pouring. Now those of you who have experienced using resin before know that if you pour it a little too thick and too deep, it'll get a little too hot and it'll also create bubbles and it's all around not going to be a pleasant experience. But luckily in the past I'd gotten away with it, especially using the other type of resin that I was using, maybe which is better for deeper pours, but this one wasn't. So I got a couple bubbles in it and the dam leaked, I think because it got so hot, the hot glue reactivated and it was a disaster, which I didn't record any of it because I was in the middle of panic mode. Excuse the fact that it looks like I've smeared Vaseline on the lens. Don't know why. But here you can see some of that damage I was talking about. And you can even see the yellowing of the paint. It got so hot that it not only remelted the glue, but it also seemed to have changed the color of the paint. I tried going back and fixing it by drilling out some of those holes and applying more resin to it, especially on the surface to try to get rid of some of those scratch marks. But it is what it is. Overall, I'm happy with it. And as I said, if there's still any resin left on the project at the end, that's still a success in my book. To finish off the top of the resin, I wanted to give it a little bit of a ripple effect. For this, I just used some gloss Mod Podge. I worked in small sections applying it to the surface and used the air from my airbrush just to blow it around and give it a little ripply effect. If you don't have an airbrush, you can totally use a straw for this, just blow. I would work in smaller sections just because it does dry pretty quick, or at least where I live, it dries pretty quick. And for a final little touch, I wanted some extra vegetation and a little touch of green coming down from the opening to the surface. So I placed and made some of these little vines. These are the same ones I did on my post-apocalyptic bridge diorama. After that, I painted the signs black and it was done. So yeah, that's another one done. It's a shame how the resin kind of messed up in little spots here and there, but as I said, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. It just means I'm gonna have to try another project in the future that involves resin and hopefully nail it then. But enough of that. Thank you so much for making it this far. If you like what you saw and you wanna see some more, click here. And if not, I'll catch you in the next one.